What type of scan tool should you buy? Well, it's gonna depend, and I'm gonna show you the different options you've got today, how much they're gonna cost, and what they do. Starting off on the budget end, we have just these affordable Bluetooth scan tools. I've been using these for quite a while, but they definitely have their limitations. We're gonna talk about that here in a little bit. Not long ago, I picked up this handheld scanner from Innova. This thing works pretty good, it's pretty snappy, it just also has its limitations. And then recently, Xtool sent me out this scan tool to review, and I have been thoroughly enjoying it. And I've also kind of opened my eyes to exactly what these things can do. So I'm gonna show you exactly what that is today and compare them, and then you can make an informed decision on what you should get. The first question that I ask is how long do they take to perform a scan? If it's gonna take 10 years to perform a scan, you're not gonna to wanna to do it. So I have this VPeak Bluetooth adapter. We're gonna go ahead and plug this in. Then I'm going to use the Torque app specifically today. Okay, so the VPeak just got done scanning and it's actually showing no fault codes. Now, I don't have any check engine codes, so that is correct. I do have a code for my tire pressure monitoring system though. It's interesting that it didn't pick that up. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go unplug my MAF sensor, start the Xterra to induce a code, and then we're gonna run it again. Okay, so we are connected. We're gonna go ahead and run the fault codes, tap for the scan. We're gonna give it some time. Oh, it actually went much faster that time. All right, so next, let's go ahead and test the handheld Innova. We're gonna go ahead and plug this in. And there you go, it's actually already powering on. I can't re-screen record this. What it's doing here is trying to figure out exactly what vehicle we have and how this thing works. Oh wow, it's already scanned. So that's pretty cool. I didn't actually even have to press any buttons. I just plug it in, it fired up and scanned. So that's actually nifty. Okay, now let's go ahead and fire up the Xtool tablet. So first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and power it on and it is firing up just like that. I'll go ahead and plug this in. Now, I'm actually still waiting on it to fire up. I would say that's one of the drawbacks of this is if you're just trying to read a check engine light really quickly, this is probably not the tool you're gonna grab. All right, I just got to my home screen. I'll go ahead and screen record for you guys. And here we go. We are on the screen. We are connected. We are ready to go. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and perform an auto scan and this should try to figure out exactly what vehicle we've got. Now I'm in a Nissan, so I'm gonna go ahead and click Nissan. Gonna go ahead and press the country. It recognizes that we're in a Nissan Xterra. And then I'm just gonna perform an automatic scan. You don't have to scan the entire system, but that's probably what I'm gonna do 90% of the time. Now, as you can see, this is gonna go ahead and check a lot more things. So for instance, right now we've got an engine, an ABS, and a BCM code. So the scan tool finished up a second ago. Okay, let's go ahead and check the quality of the data that we are getting. I've got the VP here, we're gonna plug this in, and let's just see, what is it giving me? What should it be giving me? And what am I gonna do with that information? Let's go ahead and run this again. And as you can see, from the very start of the test, it's actually found two fault codes already. It's still running, but I do like that it said, hey, I'm not done, but here's what you should know right now. Okay, so one thing that I do like about the Torque app is it actually organizes this data really well. It just says right here, hey, uh, you got a mass airflow sensors code, you got an intake air temperature sensor code. One thing I don't understand is it's telling me that I have a historic fault, which is odd because I've never had a fault code for this. I just had the X tool plugged in about a week ago and it said, hey, everything's good. There's no issues. I'm very confident that I've never had an intake air temperature sensor code. Also, it's not telling me about VDC and it didn't find my dead TPMS sensors or my lack thereof. So again, this thing would be fine for just very quickly reading check engine lights and just kind of trying to figure out what you're dealing with. Okay, so I actually have the Innova here and as you can see, we have a mass airflow sensor, uh, low input and if we keep scrolling uh there's more information about it i think is what i'm looking at oh so this is just one code that it's telling me about so how do i go look at the other four and then here's freeze frame data i i really don't like this honestly so this tool is really fast which uh, would be really helpful for example i would probably throw this in my trail bag for when i'm going off-roading or if i'm going to the racetrack this would be a great way to just quickly plug this in find out if there's an issue get to a parts store, get the car fixed, get it back on track, do whatever you have to do. However, if I'm at home, this thing is miserable. I'm scrolling down right now, first check engine light. I just wanna see what the second check engine light is. Still scrolling, still scrolling, still scrolling. What's the second check engine light? I don't care about this freeze frame data. That's the thing, it makes you look at the freeze frame data. You can't just say like, hey, oh, just give me the check engine light. Oh, let me press this button to get the, the freeze frame data. There it is, sorry, second check engine light, and it's another intake air temperature. And if I go down, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, okay. My plan with this is to leave it in my wife's car, and if she ever calls and says, hey, I have a check engine light, I'm just gonna say, there's a scan tool, plug it in, 
send me a picture of the first screen because it does. If you plug it in, it just tells you the check engine light. You don't have to, you don't have to work to get there. It just says, here it is. Here's what you're looking for, which I think is really helpful. I just unplugged this, but you should also know this never gave me a warning about my VDC not being activated or possibly having an issue. On top of that, it didn't tell me anything about my TPMS sensors. So if you have a TPMS sensor light and you want to know maybe which one's off, this isn't going to do that. You're going to have to take it to a dealership still. Okay, so I have the XTool here. And as you can see, we have more codes than just the TPMS and the mass airflow sensor. It's actually telling me that there is a fault with the VDC system, which is going to be essentially the stability track or the stability system here in the Nissan Xterra. Now, I've never actually driven my Xterra with a code like this before, but I'm going to believe that it's telling me that it cannot use VDC right now. This is really interesting because if that's not going to work, and I'm driving around in snow or something like that, that could definitely be a concern. And I'm glad that the X tool is warning me about that. On top of that, obviously it did find the fact that I don't have any TPMS sensors. I really wish I could turn those off. Maybe the X tool can, I have not been able to figure that out. And then finally we come down to engine and as it's telling us, we have a mass airflow sensor and an inlet air temperature sensor code. So really interesting stuff. I really like this interface. This is extremely clean and easy to read. And on top of that, you can also just jump right in and perform other diagnostics. So as far as speed and quality goes, honestly, the Torque app is probably just the easiest one to plug in, get a code and move on. The Innova gives you more information. It's got the freeze frame data. Honestly, I, I think that this is just set up so poorly. It, this is not what I'm gonna reach when I have a check engine light. As far as data quality goes, the tablet is obviously gonna win out every single time. This thing is just laid out much more clearly. Uh, it's actually got the diagnostics that you can do right here on the tablet. As soon as you get a code, you can just tap on it and say, let's go mess with it. Let's go look at the data. This is really nice to have. Let's test out live data on each item real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up. We are gonna start with looking at live data on the VP. Okay, so here we are. We have the Torque app fired up. We are looking at live data and I actually see uh, a throttle input and a vacuum. Let's go ahead and maybe give the throttle just a little blip and uh, see what our vacuum does. Not too bad. And the nice thing is it'll actually tell us the high and low value. Now you have different things that you can do here. You can actually put in graphs. My only concern with something like this is that you don't always get the data that you really want. For example, I tow uh, 5,200 pounds with my Xterra sometimes, and I would really like to be able to monitor transmission temperature Quick data. Quick correction, the Torque app actually has a transmission temperature option. However, it's not reading any real sensor data. It's a calculated thing. I couldn't get it to actually do anything. So while this does work, it's really only going to log the basic sensors. Anything beyond that, you're probably not gonna be able to get it. Okay, so we have the Innova here. I'm gonna have a lot more engine noise, so I apologize. Okay, so it's actually just spitting out random bits of the information. We have fuel. Okay, so I've scrolled through this, and again, it's gonna be the same story as the phone scanner. You do have some things that you can log, and we'll even try a graph it here in a second, but man, once you start getting beyond the basic sensors, uh, it's really limited. Also, I hate the shorthand here, uh, Lambda, Bank 2, Sensor 1, okay. Now this is gonna be my O2 sensor, and Hey, that's actually not bad, honestly. I don't hate that graph. I just really hate the shorthand, but that would actually work. You could definitely check your Lambda sensors. Now we're looking at a value of 0.9 to one volt. This is really odd as it should be oscillating around 0.4 to 0.6 or 0.2 to 0.8, just depending on the sensor. I have an active check engine light here for that disconnected MAF sensor, and it's actually raised the idle. So I think there's just some weird things going on. I reset the code here in a little bit. It doesn't really walk you through it. Let's go ahead and plug in the X tool. Now with the X tool, and I'm gonna guess most tablet scan tools, what you're gonna do is you're actually gonna go ahead and connect to the vehicle, which is what I'm doing right now. It's just gotta initialize the connection. Now, one thing that the X tool can do that the other sensors could not is look at transmission temperature data. So if we go into transmission, we're gonna go to live data, gonna go to main signals. We can look at all data streams, but that has so much, I wouldn't even know what to do with it. Come on down right here, transmission temperature. I can just hit that little drop down and right here's my graph, my live data. Now this isn't gonna do anything because the transmission's already been up to temp because I drove 20 minutes here. So one thing that I hadn't thought about this entire time is the X tool actually has special functions, which I actually have pulled up right now. Uh, I didn't even realize I could do this. So we have misfire count, past misfire counts. Oh, and it looks like it's just gonna sit here and count them off for each cylinder. That's pretty nifty actually. This would have been really helpful on an old vehicle that I had and I just could not figure out where it was misfiring and what was going on. Target idle RPM adjustment. 
that might be helpful on the RX-8 due to all the porting that I've done. If you guys are familiar with my RX-8, uh, check out some of my other videos. Idle air volume, learn, fuel pressure, release. That's cool. You can just press the button. No, don't do it. So this thing's got a bunch of really cool features to it. You also have various special functions for just various vehicles. So key programming, this is something that I am hoping to test here soon. I need to do it on the Mazda, but it's got a whole host of car brands. If you've got a car brand, yes, it is probably listed. They actually have a website where it talks about these special functions and what kind of car it would work on. So you want to review this ahead of time. Now, engine special functions, uh, like some of the relearns, those are fairly generic. So you just need to make sure you do a little bit of Googling on that beforehand. If you guys got questions, hop down in the comments, let me know, and I can come out here and test it on myself and let you know kind of what you should keep in mind. Now, this thing is also bi-directional, and what that means is that we can actually go through and actuate different systems. I do have an actuation test screen right here, and I got the cooling fan. So let's see if we can turn on these cooling fans. Let's turn them on low. There they go, they're on. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn them to high. On high, pretty nifty. This actually has a handful of different things here, like the VIAS, which is a Nissan specific system. Uh, I'm gonna turn this on, but I don't think I'm gonna hear it do anything. Oh, I do, I do hear it. Okay, that's pretty cool. It's actually really nifty because I know my VIAS is bad. Also, this is a Nissan specific system. So it goes to show that this should be set up to handle uh, different company specific systems, which is pretty cool. There's one final system that we haven't talked about yet today. And that's the fact that this is just an Android tablet. And what that means is I can get on the internet with this thing. Uh, for example, I just got done doing a hybrid Renesis build on my RX-8 and I truly wish I had all those build instructions right here on a tablet setting on my table, ready to go at a moment's notice because my phone was all over the shop, playing music, taking pictures, texting my buddies. At one point I was even on a Discord call with them and every single time I have to go back to my notes, I have to go find a torque spec. It would be really cool if it was all just sitting here and the next time it will be. Okay, so we've looked at what these things can do, how well they work, which ones should you buy? Well, if you're just an at-home mechanic and you need to read codes every once in a while and that's about it, honestly, these little Bluetooth dongles, this will probably get you where you need to be. Now, you do need to keep in mind that if you're gonna have a further issue beyond the engine troubles, like for instance, transmission, ABS, uh, safety systems, this is not going to be able to do that. The Innova does have a couple of tricks up its sleeves. It'll actually give you check engine lights rather quickly. It's kind of dummy proof just to see what a check engine light is. I don't like it though. This thing is just kind of a pain to figure out how to work. I bought this thing for $100, and if I knew how well it looked, honestly, I probably wouldn't have. Now, if you're somebody like me who is building an engine right now, if you're towing more than you're supposed to be with your vehicle, if you're going on 20-hour road trips to go off-roading, uh, personally, I think that the X-Tool tablet is going to be a very beneficial purchase. The nice thing about these tablets is you're done. You don't need to buy something else. This is going to do it all. I can program keys with this. I can do actuation tests with this. I can look at live data with this. I can obviously read codes for the engine, but I can also look at codes for the transmission. Well, thanks guys for watching. And if you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll be happy to answer them. See you guys in the next video.